What's the largest telescope you ever had a chance to look through yourself? I've looked through the 60-incher mm -hmm. at Mount Wilson, and if you, I've seen Jupiter and Saturn, and they're very large, very bright, and very fuzzy. If you want to see what they look like, get down on the sidewalk with us. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> um, we have a question from India, from Raghu. Uh, how do we get people more excited about the sky when it's clouded out by light pollution? It's when, when it's harder to see things in the telescope with, because of light yes, pollution. Yes, but you can see the moon anyway. You can see the moon and the planets and Jupiter's moons and all those things you can see. But the astronomers are concerned about seeing galaxies and things. They're the people who are concerned about the brightness of the, of the night sky. But the public doesn't have that problem. That's an astronomer's problem, not a public problem. Mm. Wait, when you go to the dark places, uh, Glacier Point, Death Valley, uh, Crater Lake, you look at other things there, uh, you show people... Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Mm. You, can, you can see a lot of things from those places. And we show... A, Usually, if we have, a, say, a 24-inch at, at Crater Lake or someplace like that, and Saturn is out, we let everybody look at Saturn first. Then the mothers with little kids can go. And then the people who stay a long time, they get to see a lot of different things. But at the beginning, we, we run everything on Saturn if Saturn is out. And uh, you don't just sleep all day, you've got solar telescopes you, you take out? We so have solar telescopes too, yeah. And anybody that has been around you knows your way of gathering people. You're like a circus barker. You just uh, yell to them, you know, come see the moon. Well, if you sun. have a big telescope, there are people that will... Well, the people will walk by, though, to, to, not looking, you see. And sometimes the people walk by... And so there's one girl in the, pl in, the, in the bunch. She wants to look, but they're going to take her right on anyway. She leaves the group and comes back and looks. If she comes back and looks, they'll all come back and look. The children will lead. You know, uh, but you anyway, there's this difficulty, you see. Uh, the, the ladies are much more interested to look through the telescope than the men are. The men already know everything. <laughs> when I say that to a bunch of ladies, they all laugh. <laughs> they all know that. Men already know everything. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Johannes in Austria wants to know if you've seen a total solar eclipse. I've seen more than one total solar eclipse. How many? Yeah. Uh, two or three. I don't remember now. What do, you, what do you think of that? Is that one of the most incredible things you've ever experienced? No, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think it's more fun to look at the sun when the moon isn't in front. <laughs> I gotta, I've seen uh, seven, I think. You, you're, you're once again, John, as always in the minority with your, your views on things. Most people think it's spectacular, but I can see your point. That's yes, great. but they're not comparing it to looking through a telescope. They're comparing it to looking around in the daytime. That's true. <laughs> and then it's spectacular. There's no question about that. Okay. There's no question about that. that. And one time we had an annular eclipse of the sun, and that was very interesting because the lighting everywhere was so peculiar that all the people standing around could see that the lighting is peculiar. Now, I'm not perfectly sure why that, I'm not at all sure why that happens like that. But the light we're getting off the sun is coming off this way, not coming out this way. It's, it's coming a, off this way, you see. Yeah, I can tell you when the, the moon covers almost all of the sun, you're getting more of the chromosphere, and which is a red color, like the hydrogen alpha telescopes use. So, so it becomes more reddish, and it doesn't, doesn't look right. Anyway, it was very peculiar. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, Hassan in uh, Pakistan wants to revisit the question. Uh, we asked some about the technological divide between uh, developing countries and developed countries. In Pakistan, for example, it's harder to get these things. But the it's the, harder to get the stuff to make a telescope in, in one of those countries. Yes, it's very much harder. But also, it's easy in California. Yeah, in the the telescopes that are available, as telescopes become more complex 
computerized. Even the Dobsonian type telescopes are manufactured to high specs and they're expensive in those places. And he wonders if you feel uh, uh, that the, it's, that is increasing the divide between developing countries and places like the United oh, States. Oh, that might be. Anyway, the, the expenses of those telescopes are not just the, they're, it's not the mirror that's expensive. It's all this gadgetry that's expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, we don't do that. We made a lot of glass, we made a lot of mirrors out of ship's windows. And if you bought, if I bought, if I, see, I borrowed a thousand dollars from my mom and bought four and a half tons. That's only a few cents a glass. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's only a few cents a glass. So the 24 incher, I don't know, we might have paid a nickel or two nickels for the glass of a 24 incher. Well, how about the grit that you used to uh, grind the, the glass? Did you we used 60 grit carborundum mm -hmm. for rough grinding. And uh, <clears throat> when I was in uh, Michigan, we wanted to get some 60 grit carborundum. And we called up all the places, and nobody has 60 grit carborundum. And it uh, doesn't matter how we tried, we couldn't get 60 grit carborundum. And then it crossed my mind that there's a tombstone cutter right near the monastery where I'm, where I'm staying. So we go to him. He's got a whole barrel of it. He lifts his can in here and gives us a whole can full of it. That's what they cut your names in the tombstone with, 60 grit carborundum. You, and I tell him we're not ready for that. We just need some carborundum. You're not customers yet. No. <laughs> so, you know, you've always found a way to do this. How did you get started in the first place wanting to build these telescopes and deciding we're going to make telescopes out of these different things? What, what got it? Started? I don't remember where I ever heard that you could grind your own glass, but I think it was a little tiny book that we got out of the library. I think I, I think there, and I had nobody to advise me. I had no, no contacts anywhere, and just this stupid little book, and so mostly I had to figure everything out for myself. Really, mostly I had to figure it out for myself. But what, what inspired you to do it in the first place? I wanted to see what the hell's going on out there. That's a good reason. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, you started, when did you build your first telescope? Uh, 1930, oh, let's see, I was still in the monastery. We started the sidewalk astronomers in 68, but I first made a telescope when I was in the monastery. So I don't remember how far back that was. It goes back quite a ways, so you always had this passion. I was about 40 years old, I think. Mm -hmm. um, one question from, from here in the U.S. about uh, Native Americans. You've traveled to many places here. Have you ever gone to Native American reservations? And yes, we've gotten the telescopes out in the, Indian, in the, in the reservations. Yes, of course. Uh -huh. Who else will get a telescope out for them? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. What about their, their own mythologies? You know, they have uh, their, their views of the sky, uh, how they share the sky and discuss, you know, did you discuss their uh, stories? We don't have to worry about that. Okay. They leave us alone for that. All right. They don't bug us. You know, uh, so... But they're happy to look through the telescopes and see those things too, you know. They don't get to see them. Of course. Did you ever... Uh, have work telescope making workshops and get some of them started making telescopes? No, I don't think we ever did. No, I don't think we ever did. Mm -hmm. But uh, one time I had to do it for, uh, for kids in prison in Maine. Now that was very interesting. That was very interesting. These great big bruisers, they're big enough to throw me against the wall. And I became their hero. This guy knows how to grind glass. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so they made telescopes and... Uh... They made two 10 inches and one sun telescope. I was there for several months, two or three months. And uh, on the very last day, the sun telescope was finished on the last day that I was there. 
and the sun had all these great big spots and everybody had such a good time looking and these big bruisers you could just see what's going on inside we made it ourselves and and we want to be clear you were there for three months but you were a visitor you weren't an inmate no i wasn't an inmate <laughs> and they could not make any arrangements for me to give a slideshow to anybody except a bunch of people that were making the telescopes that's just one house full of people there are a lot of houses you see and the ladies are all in a different section I couldn't do anything with the ladies and they could not get all of those kids in, in one place they don't dare put all of those kids in one place and they don't de dare give me have me give a slideshow to the adults without the kids they can't separate the adults from the kids anyway they have, they have all these problems and I had a spinning rope you see I taught some of those kids how to spin rope anyway so then my rope was declared contraband it can't come on the premises anymore if it's something the kids can hurt each other with yeah. it's not allowed on the premises yeah they're not allowed anything sharp. Uh, do we have, um, I haven't gone back to uh, any video questions. Do we have remote sites that are able to? Okay. I guess, I guess not. We do have a question from, uh, again, from Orlando Varela. Rob, let me know what country Orlando is in. Um, and he wants to know about your favorite views from our solar system or deep sky objects. What, what are your favorite things to look at? Well, I'm particularly fond of galaxies. Hmm and the the farthest away things that I've seen through a telescope the light left there during the late during the formation of the late Precambrian rocks at the bottom of the Grand Canyon while those rocks were forming the lights been coming <laughs> from those galaxies that's the farthest away thing I've seen that's uh, it, it is <laughs> it is amazing hard to comprehend for all of us and Orlando is by the way from Venezuela so uh, oh, all right. have you been to Venezuela no you've been to India I know that so. um, you know some other things too uh, uh, it's uh, interesting how you became so innovative or creative in the things that you're doing how you see things a bit differently That's than just other there people was no other way to go mm -hmm. you've always been that way since there you were was a child. no other way to go if you want a cardboard tube, get somebody who makes cardboard tubes. <laughs> okay. What, now, uh, before... If you want ground, round glass, get a ship. 